I, I'm really happy that I'm, I'm really happy that I see uh, these ideas so clearly uh, presented. Uh, just, just as an as an addendum, I think I was trying to uh, to, uh, to to argue now that these structures are propositional structures only, and as you said, they deserve some probabilities. But these, these structures alone, not necessarily, or don't determine their probabilities. Yeah? This thing, the probability depends on this on the additional assumptions and models. Okay? So, from a classical point of view, um, from uh, croquet theory and for Boyev, I'm sorry, I cannot uh, pronounce these, these, uh, these names. They all have had the idea that um, you build the classical probabilities from convex linear combinations of extreme situations which you would call two-valued equations. Now, what is a two-valued equation? A two-valued measure is a classical interpretation of these structures, such that in every such context, for every maximal observable, only one one occurs and the others are zero. Yeah? So, this is true also, this is true also for, for quantum mechanics, but quantum mechanics allows uh, values that are not that are not only zero and one, so it's not only quantum mechanics. Quantum mechanics can have more flex; they have more flexible probabilities. But but what, what so what you can do is you you can do classic predictions by saying that if you interpret these structures which come about from vector considerations in quantum mechanics. Yeah? So you get these structures from quantum mechanics. If you interpret them classically, what, what would be, what, I think this is not good, what, what would be the consequence? What, what would be the, the, the consequence of, um, of interpreting this classically. Yeah? So uh, you would say that classically only one of these, uh, all, only one atom per con context should acquire the value one and the others zero. So I've given you some example for the house type, for the pentagon type, or pentagram, however you might call it. Here, this structure, Thomas, may I just find out one context? I use Thomas drawings. Uh, here, you, you get five such contexts. You get, uh, you get five to many, five configurations. One, two, three. I draw them now in black. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, this is not good. I'm, I'm getting dizzy now. I'm sorry for that. One, two, three, four, five. And the first configuration is um, the one on the intertwine. Okay? Second configuration is the one here and the one here. Third configuration is the one here and the one here. Fourth configuration is the one here and the one here. Uh, let's make it more consistent. And the one here. And the fifth configuration is the one here and the one here. So, in the sense of, uh, I think it's Carnap. Carnap, the one who developed this uh, instantiation, not uh -huh. based on instantiation. Uh -huh. These are like all the possible universes, yes. all the possible worlds that yes. that structure can yeah. have. Yeah, all the possible cases. Yeah. Right. 
of course, in quantum mechanics, you can have mixtures, but yes. not. Yeah? They are not uh, concrete words. Yes. So, you, you may ask yourself then, what are the classical probabilities which you build from these extreme cases on this structure? Mind you, we have motivated this structure quantum mechanically. I can motivate them also with classic classical models, yeah? generalized group models and so on. Uh, but, but I force myself now to interpret these structures classically. Let's assume that then we get all kinds of goodies. Yeah? And one of the com here everything is fine. You know, it contains sufficiently many two headed states. There are, there are more than enough. So, but, but let's consider this simple example, which is not trivial. Because, as Thomas mentioned, I mean, the, the most trivial example would be just in two dimensions this disconnected thing. You know? When three, con three dimensions, two disconnected. You know, would be like this and this somewhere, you know, not connected in any way. Of course, you cannot have a triangle in three dimensions. This is impossible by geometric reasons. Yeah? You can have a triangle in four dimensions. And you can start a, study then, uh, uh, you can study these, these diagrams in a systematic fashion. They have to been doing this since since ages. They meaning the quantum logic meaning. The algebraists. So in order to to do a classical analysis of classical uh, classical analysis of classical probabilities, uh, we we say that every such configuration corresponds to an extreme case. It corresponds to uh, of a of a classical of a classical uh, occurrence. Yeah. So it says this occurs in both contexts. So so you have basically five cases, and you have to sum over these five cases, and you have to value them by linear factors. In these five cases, all have to add up to one, and the factors themselves, or weights, as you call them, AI, need to be bigger than or uh, equal to zero, and need to be smaller than or equal to one. Okay? This just creates a a polytope, convex polytope. And let, let's start here. So I say this is the lambda one here. And then I get, this is two, I get a lambda two here, and a lambda three here. And um, this atom here, or this leg, uh, has a lambda 4 plus a lambda 5. And this, you know, I'm just looking at these instances where, 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 where they are true. Where it's lambda 2 plus lambda 4. And here is lambda 3 plus lambda 5. So that would lost. Why those combinations? Um, because these are all the possible two-valued measures, the extreme cases, also classically. And you know, these are the class these are classical interpretations of quantum of, pre of previous quantum configurations. Yeah. Are, are you totally confused now, or are you okay? No, I am okay. Yeah. Okay. So, so I'm, I'm kind of uh, combining in a, in a, in a, in a um, complex fashion with those probabilities being, because these are the probabilities of these extreme cases. 
you know, and combining them to all the classical probabilities. This is, you know, I, this is, in my opinion, uh, I did this first. This was in 2001. But I didn't go to JSON up because uh, somehow I went to, to Salzburg. I'm not in summer, I'm not, and there was no, there, no, there was some issues, I don't know. But, uh, but these are really the probabilities, and you can do that with that one as well, and you get all the, um, they, are, they are in my publications, you know. Yes. The, the program is quite simple. Uh, take uh, some quantum configuration, evaluate all two valued measures, and if possible, if they are separating, separating means that there exists a single measure, at least a single measure, can also be more, separating two atoms, and all of them. So for instance, this measure would separate between this atom and that atom, would not separate between this atom and that atom. But this measure would separate between this and that. This separate part. means that they determine the true value of one, yeah, the one is one and the other is two. Yeah. And there is a theorem uh, by Kochenspecker, they call it theorem zero in this famous Kochenspecker paper, uh, saying that as long as you can separate the set of two valid states, you have a classic interpretation. And you could, could do uh, classic probabilities. But of course, you need not. I'm, I'm just telling you that uh, this is one option of two at the moment. I don't know a third one. So the search is on for a third one. But I, my problem, for instance, is that when I talk to people, they don't understand what I'm saying, you know, because they, they don't, because, because this thing here has also a generalized Ur model interpretation, which is quasi classical, it has nothing to do with one. And what many people also don't know, and what uh, Eden Cabello and co workers, uh, he has uh, a lot of uh, very good geometry at his disposal. And he has. Uh, he has, uh, he has uh, some papers, and since I was working with him, I, uh, I learned a lot uh, also from the geometers. Um, he, they, they exist totally unconnected to quantum mechanics. There, there was, in decision theory, a couple of uh, geometers, graph theorists, and this was in the 70s or in the 80s totally unconnected to quantum mechanics who have graphs of this type and had developed what they call a theta body. He said, what the, a theta, theta body, theta body. Theta what? Theta. Point. Theta body. Point. Body. Body. The theta body is, is a convex set of quantum. We would call it quantum probabilities. That is, uh, for, for them, uh, yeah. Uh, Are these guys Dempster and Schaffer? No. Uh, I, they look like, they sound like Schrift. Not Schrift, but. Okay. Uh -huh. but, but, but they were working on the following issue. They were working on the issue which appeared in a totally different context with quantum mechanics. They were working on the issue of uh, representing such diagrams, not the creature tokenality, but the usual diagrams, these uh, orthogonality diagrams, autogon faceful orthogonal representation of diagrams. So they would they would have a, a, a graph, and they would say, I want this graph to have a, an orthogonal representation in terms of every atom corresponds to a vector, and those connected are not orthogonal. But you can have inverse graphs, so those connected are orthogonal. Yeah? So, so basically, they were doing the same stuff. And then they said, well, what is the result? Because uh, they had also some probability. They, they, they had basically the same probability idea as the one tool, as this uh, quantum mechanical probability for, for this. Uh, so, 
So the theta body is the quantum mechanical uh, probabilities of that. It's different from those. <coughs> and in graph theoretic terms, we are talking in quantum mechanics about the theta body. This was when the late, this was uh, the late Pudovsky was very much interested in that. It's here and in other people. Anyway, so, but he, he was not aware that this is, that people had done this. But it's kind of funny that they did this. So, uh, if you have understood the basics of what Thomas explained to you, I'm, I'm going to fast track now on, on certain such diagrams. No? I have already, uh, Thomas has already discussed this diagram here, and this is really the basis of, of most of the diagrams, you know, just a sub diagram. You, usually in the coaching Specker paper, such, such a thing would be represented graph theoretically as orthogonality graph. Yeah? So, this is that. Yeah, this, this collapses. Yeah. So, so this is the old papers and the Capello papers also uh, in the old times used this. But I hope that I convinced him to use this. Our new paper is more into this, but probably he's distracting into other anyway, so because it's very compact. And for instance, Speckerbach. Looks like this in Specker's work or in Pitovsky's work. Because they were not aware that, uh, well, in Specker's time, there was not the one the creature thing. Yeah, the, the quantum uh, logic community was really into inventing new logics of that form. They were exploiting, they were exploring. In order to do that, they invented this, Grich invented this, uh, this problem. With, with Grich, I had some little nasty exchanges because I was uh, the, the president of the Quantum Structure Association and unfortunately an extremely nice guy from, uh, from, uh, from, from Belgium died tragically and, and I realized that uh, the Trichy as a treasurer had all the money of the, all the money of the, of the and then I said uh, the, a, simple, a, a simple man cannot have all the money and then, and then this exchange got a little bit out of it. But it's, it's settled. We had uh, they get now got an American president because the Americans didn't want uh, uh, European, uh, into European coffers. It was very interesting. And it's funny because I tried to explain to them why does the quantum structure foundation need money anyway, you know, from their members. I'm not into money, I'm into mathematics or physics. But uh, anyway, so I think they are happy to have got rid of me uh, as a president, but I don't know. Anyway, so, um, so I'm, I'm walking you through now. Uh, this is already clear, then there's another one. Nobody has discussed, but it's so simple. Nobody has discussed this. We, we still did it uh, because we needed that. If uh, that is true, and that is true, that must be true. Here, yeah. yeah. so that's you can you can also do it that way. So there exists a lot of identical explanations. So. The next one is uh, three times, uh, with some identification, three times this, this thing here. It's the house or the pentagram. What can I say of that? Yeah, I can say of that. If, if you do correlation observers and assume classical, ah, and assume classical probabilities, you get what people call the Gliash-Kurier point. 
It's just the standard procedure, and I will not go too deeply into how to explicitly calculate that. But it's like that. You know? This is this is an exotic measure invented by Ron Wright. Ron Wright was the big hope, was a student of Faris, was the big hope of the quantum structure community. He is now practicing psychotherapy in Arizona. I think he is happy with that. Unfortunately, he left the thing. Uh, next thing is the Specker part. Now, I've shown this already to you in the Specker terminology. Now, here with the Grigge diagram. Grigge diagram is because Grigge introduced it to construct such logics. Now, the Specker, I, I think, contains certain, you know, I think that's the story, sorry. Uh, this special diagram, um, you, you put a one half. Uh, yes, because this one, one this, this, one, this one is irreducible uh, to this. This here cannot, this cannot uh, uh, be, uh, be uh, combined. Uh, also, you cannot combine these 11 measures to form this one. Uh, just because this is the only one, I mean, you can immediately eliminate that. Yeah? But, um, you know, whenever you have an edge here, all the others have edges, which also have an edge in the middle. This is basically the proof. Yeah. Whenever you have an edge here, here, so these two cases, you got an edge here. So as you should as you get a, a one here. So you you cannot So these blue boxes are black dots. These are these are probabilities one half. This is an exhaustive probability ah, okay. so, yeah. uh, and all of them are one half. They are totally justified or because of the local of rules because they add up in every context yeah. to, to one. It's like the magic square. <laughs> and they cannot construct, cannot be constructed from, uh, I mean, the proof is uh, in, in, in Wright's paper, but basically, yeah. classically, the proof is trivial, almost, because uh, if you just consider this thing here, uh, this should be a linear co a convex combination of these two. But uh, this one contains other things from here. So the statement would be that those 12 uh, houses are the 12 possible classical realizations where the blue, the black points add up to one. So each, each house, as long as the three uh, black points add up to one, is a classical realization. And the number 12 one, yeah. has no two ways of doing it, only one. All the others have infinite ways. No, I mean, this thing here cannot be constructed yeah, yeah. in terms of the eleven. I mean, what do you mean to add up one? Because you like need one third is one. But so you need to let eleven and five. Ah, oh, yeah, 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 but the same. So let's say, for example, a, a, possi a, a possible realization of one would be to say probability one half to the top. Yes. Then probability one quarter to the okay, left and yes, probability right. one quarter to the right. Yes. I mean you should you and should eliminate everything in the middle, you know? But then you eliminate all of these. No no but before getting there, before getting there. Yeah. So one I just to understand what all this means. Yeah. So just if we only think of one, yes. A possible realization of one is to say one uh, zero point five on the top on the top uh, element. So can you write 0 0.5 together to the top in one? 0 0.5, like Markov kind of yeah. probability, 0 0.25 0 and 0 0.25, or 0 0.3, 0 0.2. Yeah. So but these are... But, but then this would also be 0 0.25. Yeah. 0 0.25. 
five and the other will have to add up to one because it's a classical probabilistic realization. Right? Well, I mean, I mean, you well, can... I'm, I'm trying to connect the logic to the probabilistic uh, yeah, realization. No, no, whenever. No, the idea is that all classic probabilities um, are a convex combination of these cases. Yes. Yeah? So, so whenever you have something non zero here, this is also non zero. Yes. And for all those edges here, you have, in all those cases, you need an additional one in the, in the middle. Yeah, yeah, no, no, this is clear. I mean, yeah. I'm, just, I'm just one step before ah. trying to think. Let's say all the universe we have, like whatever rules, the only case we can have is one. Okay. So then all the possible classical instantiations yes. of that would be three values of lambda that will represent the probability of the three black points, yeah. and they will have to add up to one, and all the yes. other possible events are exactly. zero. Exactly. And this and corresponds then, to a linear uh, of a Yes. So in this structure, we have 11 classical probabilistic uh, schemes, let's yeah. say, where with infinite possibilities, each of them. Yes. And one case with only one possibility to be yeah. uh, conceived, let's say. Is that the case? Yes. Yeah. Okay, so it's, it's trivial, but to me it was now I now I and the complex combinations of all of them will form all the classical possibilities. Exactly. So so for instance. And the twelve is irreducible and each of them is irreducible from the others. Of course. Yeah, exactly. So it's a basis. So so, so for instance this this thing here has uh Lambda 1 plus lambda 2 because I need now 11. Uh, plus lambda 6 plus lambda 8. And that's it. You know, this is, this is the, the probability here. And there are 11 such lambdas. Yeah. And in one realization, which you have in mind, all these lambdas are 0 here. Lambda 2, lambda 6, lambda 8. It's just the lambda 1 that is. What? Yeah. In this case. Uh, but this, uh, and, and um, Wright gives an example for an artificial, quite artificial example for a physical realization of this, this measure. But it's very artificial. It has nothing to do with uh, it's adaptive and so on and so forth. So, so let's let's now go on uh, with uh, this Speckerbach. Now the Speckerbach has, I don't know, I think it has 13, but I'm not sure about that. So it has a couple of two values measured, all of them are separable. Uh, let's from now on do the following convention. Uh, the, the structure is drawn black. Uh, one is drawn in red, and zeros are drawn in uh, green. And if you don't mind, I just take what Kappa is called a almost Christian diagram by just uh, drawing the important atoms. Yeah? The others you can you can you can construct yourself. So. I mean, there exist some where, let's say, I think this is a funny one. Uh, let's make this. Can I do this? No, I can't. So I cannot do this. See? Because, uh, this would give me this would give me too many red, too many grounds here. So this is this is all done. Cannot do this. So I think this is a that's my first attempt. But of course I know that there are many. But the fact that you have three uh, just just more philosophically speaking, or maybe not, the thing is the fact that you have in one of the lines three green points 
will mean that from that context, reality vanishes. So you have reality when you look at this, and then when you move to that basis, there is nothing. It's not stable. Yeah, yeah, but that will be the, the straightforward interpretation, which makes no sense. But yeah, no, I, I mean, the mathematicians see it more formally. They see if I agree to the rule that there has to be one and the other has to be three, this is no good measure. This is you see what 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 they want is all these cases. It's a, but it's sort of like a like a context of denial. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. So one of the cases is here, and then of course I can I can go on with this one. This 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 this, and then we are free. Let's say to put this here. If I put this here, then. This is actually how, how we construct our latest example, like this and Edward and This has to be, now we have no other choice, no other consistent choice to make this red and this green. And if this is red, this has to be green, this has to be green, so there is, is no other consistent choice between this one. So this is a very valid color. But mind you, this is one here, and this is zero. Now, as, as I did last time, last, last uh, hour, the beauty of this one here, of this structure, and this, one, this structure was rediscovered a couple of times. The first time it was uh, two years before the famous Kölschenspecker paper, also in Kölschenspecker, but not famous. Not infamous, but not famous. Specker, when he was in Vienna, calls this the Käfer, the bug. Because for him, you know, as I said, for him it was this. It was an ugly bug. I still have the, 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 the slides. I'm keeping the slides. At some point, uh, I have to write a biographic note on my experiences with Specker. Because he said a lot of funny things. This was the Specker Park. What became what becomes now this. And Specker's intention, coach, coach Specker's intention, I don't know if, how much coaching was involved, but I suppose half of it. So um, they, they exploit the feature. And the feature is if this is one, this has to be zero. And they prove it by contradiction. Proof by contradiction. They assume that both of them are one and derive a complete contradiction. I did that already, but let's do it again. This has to be zero, this has to be zero, this has to be zero. Now, because of those have to be zero, this has to be one, and this has to be one. And of course, we are dead because we cannot have two, uh, two ones on a single context. Two detectors click at the same time. This is impossible. So, this is what I call a one, one, one zero rule. Uh, Capello has a sexier uh, characterization, he calls it the TIFF, uh, because uh, it gets them to a TIT. Uh, the TIFF is two implies four. This has to be false. Otherwise, uh, there would be a contradiction. Mind you, this still has a classical interpretation. But in these classical interpretations, whenever this is true, this has to be And it also worked on that. 
a lot of other people in their whole point of us that there is a certain weirdness if you interpret that classically. And you know, even before the, the daily inequalities, you can derive some quantum, some generic quantum mechanical behavior because this has quantum realization. The quantum realization is that you prepare this and measure this. And according to the classic predictions, when you prepare this, measurement of this will never lead to a result, a positive result. But quantum mechanically it does. And the maximal, the, ma the maximal uh, probability uh, of the maximum quantum probability, because quantum probability is also constrained by this, you know, because the vectors are constrained. We have to represent this as a theta body in the modern terminology. In order to do that, you are constrained. And the maximal thing, if this is one, uh, this, has, this can be maximal one, one over nine. So it's not good. In nine, one over nine cases, you find you know, chances are that you find this to be, if, if I present you a black box and say, is this a classical realization? I can give you a classical realization, but you will be bored. Well, I don't want to bother you with this. Is this a classical machine or a quantum machine? Uh, and you find uh, that this occurs here, despite the classical prediction that it doesn't occur, you will say, well, this is the quantum. But you have to invest in nine particles for that. Now, we have, uh, we mean, uh, 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 we have uh, a paper where we get another structure where we, we get arbitrarily close to one with finite numbers. Of, uh, so this includes finite different clouds. I call this a cloud. Contextual, you know, cloud is just an intertwined collection of contexts. And uh, this is, uh, but, but, but for, for historic reasons, you know, I, I think really. The important thing here is not that you improve the thing. I mean, this is for practical reasons, yes. But uh, the important thing is that such things happen. And, and this is the first indication that something is, is non-classic. Yeah? So I suppose you're going to get that number nine out of the graph or something? Or out of the graph, out of the realization. I mean, uh, if you want, uh, if you want, um, uh, I actually printed it out. I, I just looked at this construction yeah, uh, yesterday because I knew that probably you are going to ask me. And uh, it's the best I know, the earliest I know is contained in Cabello's dissertation. And you will be better able to honor this because it's written in Spanish. <laughs> it's on the internet and it has been in the year 19. 94, I think. Mean. Is his thesis? Yes. It's a very nice thesis. Okay. Cabello. Adam. Adam Cabello. But I, I shouldn't say this publicly, but with Adam Cabello, you have to be very careful what he claims sometimes. You know? And what he actually does. Everything is very interesting. I learned a lot, but one has to be careful. One has to be careful because I, I like this that he sometimes tends to speculate. But this derivation is no speculation, it's just a fact. And, and he starts out going, you know, it's, it's quite easy what, what he, I think it's a, a nice argument, you know? So he starts out saying, well, uh, without loss of generality, <coughs> I assume this is realized by the vector 1, 0, 0. And this is realized by a rotated vector rotated in the x-y plane. Uh, cosinus phi 
sinus phi, zero. And then he constructs this, and this, and this, and this. And uh, uh, he introduces new angles here and here, alpha and beta. And uh, because this has to be, uh, and then, and then, what? Once he gets that, he gets that, and that, and that. And uh, he then says that this has to be one, the, the, the square root of, of this. Uh, and from that he derives uh, a condition on, the, on, the, on, on, on this angle, on the file. This is Akkus Dangens. Two powers three or something. But you can see on page 13, 37 of his dissertation. 1994. 1994? 4. 1994. But you just look at Adam Capello dissertation, or if you can find cannot find it, I send you the link. I think actually in my new work. Works uh, after I discovered that he has done this, I gave references to all of this. So you can just go, go to the archive of some publication. So, but, but this is, you know, that this is so low, this realization, it's not, it's not, it's a deficiency in terms of effectiveness. But if I get, I mean, I can give you better ones that are arbitrary close to one, so you need only one experimental box. And, and we now call it TIFF. TIFF's true implies false set of two valid states. Okay? Now, how, how much time have we got? Half an hour? Half an hour. Yeah. Now I give you two other structures. One structure is the TIT structure. True implies two set of two edits. And this is this was by Kochen Specker first discovered, and this one, the new one is also by Kochen Specker. It consists of the TIT structure augmented by two contents. Of course, you know, I could draw you know, all kinds of funny things, you know, like this one. This is a context and this is a context. And they are intertwining here and here. The real issue is, and this is the, 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 the achievement of Coach and Specker, to actually realize that in quantum configuration with vectors, yeah, vector realizations, that's, that's, that's it. So to, to get a faithful orthogonal representation in terms of this data uh, position. And that's by no means true. But I assume this has been algorithmized. Yes. Yes. Uh, in the 90s or in the yeah. 20 years ago. But, but, there is no systematic algorithm. It's just ah, it's of course. It's a realistic. And for the guys to ask is, uh, at least I know, uh, one that comes to Vienna soon uh, is a collaborator of Adam because we are preparing one paper on, on non-separating set. Uh, only Adam will join, I don't know. Uh, uh, he, uh, he is from Sevilla. Ah, it's uh, Cabello's Rappaganda. Uh, it's, um, it's Jose. Jose. Oh my God, I'm, yeah. I'm brain dead at the moment. Yes, yeah. <laughs> he's, he's, he's a German, a very good German. And he 
he, he has done most of the computations, the actual computations, which led to the previous data. And uh, and the other one is, is Pavicic. But Pavicic is difficult to talk to. I, I can talk to Pavicic, I like him, but he's, he's not everybody's friend. Okay, so, uh, but of course the, this says nothing to the scientific issue. Okay, so, um, true, if this is true, you already know that this has to be false. I don't, I, I hope I don't need to convince you that this is so. Yeah? Now, if this is true, this has to be false as well. Now, with this false and this false, this has to be good. This is actually minimal facility. It's the smallest one. We have proof of that. This is the smallest one in theory for tips. So, this is true implies true. And the Cauchy's Becker theorem is nothing more than piled higher and deeper. You know, they, they were connecting many pieces of that to come back, and all of them, and, and, and three of them true, but not over. And this cannot be. So, so they kind of, I, I will show you the Capello construction, Capello and Tobel are so. The Cochrane's Becker theorem shows a structure that has no classical realization whatsoever. Correct. That's what it goes to. Yes. Higher. Yes, it's very strong, it's yeah. very strong. But they, but they have, but they have an intermediate thing, which has also no classical realization, but it's much shorter. They were combining these things. So, so I mean, there were some difference. Cabello uh, calls this. Uh, Hardy like proofs, you know. Hardy, I don't think that Hardy really understood what he was doing. I, I shouldn't uh, speak so loud about it. But, but Hardy was just giving uh, uh, the coordinates, but really he was doing this one. Uh, and, and, and whenever you produce this and observe a non occurrence here, uh, this shows that it's, that it's quantum and not classic. Because according to the classic prediction, this implies that this also happens. And now comes uh, the first real non-classic, the first real non-classic uh, diagram. Because these things still contain enough two values, sufficiently too many two valid states uh, for, for me to get to a generalized non model or a final autonomous model, or a partition logic. Contains a lot of two valid states to structure. Sufficiently many to separate. But this one not. This is a co I call it a combo of Specker parts. And this is Cauchy Specker diagram three. Gamma three. This is their gamma three. Original paper, but nobody reads the Polish paper. And they are interconnected. This is a joint here. This is an uh, intertwine. Now, I, I claim that these points, that these two points, all these two points cannot be separated uh, with classical terms. There doesn't exist any two-valued classical measure which would separate either this or this. This is quite simple. I use this one. So if this is true, we just argued. I mean, of course, the problem is to find uh, in faithful orthogonal representation in terms of vectors. You know, once you have the, that, uh, this my argument is peanuts. No, I just follow the coach which makes If this is true according to this, this has to be true. So, sorry, one question. Ah, sorry. No, this has to be false. Sorry. Yeah? 
the, the curves going up and down are also contexts? Yeah, they are contexts. Yeah. And they are intertwined. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, I identify... No, but just to make sure, the curve that goes up and then goes down, it's also a context. Uh, but that's not that, not that. Just, just get to the point and now go back up. Go back yes. up. This is the context. No, no, no. I mean, start from any of the corners, please. Move the corner. Okay. Ah, you say what? Yes. 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 It's so, still a context. Ah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean this. Look, look, look what I do. This and then that. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, it has to be smooth. It, uh, no, no problem. So, ah, so no, it is not a context. No? So this and this is no context. Ah, okay. Oh. Well, that's what that was my question. Yes. Okay. And yes. this one? Good point. Uh, well, if I would draw this, this would be a context. No, this but the, the small one. Uh, this, this, this one is. The small one has context. There is a deep. No, no, no. But uh, you are referring to one. Ah! It has to be smooth. It has to be smooth, guys. Yeah, if it's smooth, it's but, a context. But I will, I will draw it, you know, you know, without it. You know, my artistic, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but the original paper was like this. The original paper was like this. Okay. Okay, so there's no discussion about this. Well, <laughs> <laughs> okay, there could be, because this is broken, but this is not common. So, um, yeah, and this is, I should draw this. This makes head like no, this. No, 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 no. So, um, so, okay, let's, let's just, let's just cut this. If this is red, this has to be green, this has to be green, this is still consistent, so this has to be red, and this has to be green. Okay? So, uh, there is no other choice. Yeah? And vice versa. If this is red, but assumedly, I mean, I can now immediately say this has to be green, and this has to be green. So these two points cannot be uh, separated from each other or these two points. So this is this is uh, uh, what Jose uh, says he said, I would call it a non-separating set of two vacant states where you can say true if true. True only if and only if true. Yeah? And this by theorem zero of Kosher Specker has no whatsoever, no classic interpretation. Um, because classically it has no classic means of differentiating between those contexts. They, they kind of compactify. Yeah, there are too few, too many measures to, uh, to represent that structure. I mean, uh, so, so there's, no, there's, no, there's no difference that I could make between this atom and this atom. Uh, this is a, a precursor to the entire absence of two vacant states. Now, now what Coach and Specker, uh, they didn't make use of that further. They just said, this is the structure, and here is the realization. They, they carried on with this, you know, and they, they, put, uh, they put a lot of... Uh, they, on top of this, they did another one, and another one, and another one, and another one, and they came back, and then they proved that this and somewhere here and somewhere here, these, these are all true according to the construction. But this can't be because uh, they are part then of a bigger triangle. Yeah. This is where the triangle comes from, and they are all true. And you are dead. This, can, this cannot happen. But uh, of course, the modern proofs are more efficient. They are much more efficient. Uh, in the in the modern proof of uh, the structure which has a quantum realization 
and uh, and no two valued state whatsoever is uh, due to Cabello and some geometers from this time from Madrid. And this is a famous uh, in four dimensions. This is the, the only time I will talk to you about four dimensional configurations. It's, uh, it's like this one. So, so every Context consists of four atoms, that is uh, sorry, 40, and you get three additional contexts, they are all smooth. And I mean, the funny thing is to find such as to find a faithful orthogonal representation to this structure. I would mean, I mean, be able to do this. I mean, I would not be able to find the structure from the start. So it's, I like, I mean, of course it's beautiful. And beyond that, it's B connected. It's B connected. Look at this. This structure, every, the atom only consists, all the atoms, it's just two contexts in the middle. Yeah? So here are two, here are two, and so on and so forth. And, and I'm giving you now the proof I understand. I look the, I mean there exists the fast the fast track proof I can give you immediately. It says, well, it has nine contexts, it's a parity proof. Uh, it's nine contexts, yeah? six, seven, eight, nine. And so in a so it's an odd number of um, contexts and therefore there must be an odd number of ones. But since they are B-connected, every atom occurs twice, so uh, there should be an even number in every relation. Now, if you understand this, I may I don't understand it. I just can reproduce it mechanically. But what I understand now is the following. I, I give you all the enumeration, I say one, let's say one, two, three, four, five, 7, 8, 9, I think it's 18, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, and I say uh, 1, 1 equals V1 plus V2 plus V3 plus V4, okay, this is quite simple. Yeah, and V, and the V should be zero, uh, zero or one, okay? Yeah, this is just a valuation, yeah? V, all V's should be element of zero and one, okay? And only, and only one can be one and the others must be zero. This is fair. Okay? Uh, I got a bit lost, but I believe not completely by the door. Uh, uh, so, uh, okay, each context is one of the, in, in one of the, the edges of the pentagram, and then the circles you, you, yes, these you ones, did. this is one context. This that, is one context. One context. And they are, they are, they are connected here. Okay, so, so they are, okay, so each point is, is, Belongs to two different contexts. They are connected. Okay. Yes. Okay. And the vertices, okay, the vertices are connected. Okay. okay. Yeah. It's cute, isn't it? Yeah, it's cute. Yeah. So, uh, uh, can you repeat the thing about the odd numbers and even numbers and different numbers? Yes. Me too. Okay. 
this is why I give you a proof I understand. But probably I'm just dumb. I, but with this proof it's so... I understand. Uh, but it's a little bit long. So you have nine contexts. Yeah? Nine times one equals, you know, nine times. And the last context, let's say, is this. Is we we prove plus V9 yeah, plus V11 plus V8. Okay? Now, since they are decommitted, every such term must be two times occurring with this sum. And now I do a big sum. I sum over all of it. Here I get nine. And here I get two times. Nine equals two times V1 plus V2 plus V18. So the V's can only be zero and one. Okay? And here's a two. So here is something which is the element of A. And here's two of those. So this is an even number. But nine is not an even number. So, so whatever this is, you know, if, if there would be a value assignment, it has to be a natural number. Because we want in that value assignment, I mean, of course, I could give you also a coloring argument. But the coloring argument, the coloring argument would, would be like this, you know. If this has to be, uh, uh, if, if this is, uh, it's a exclusion argument, but the typical argument like this, this has to be uh, green, and we are free to choose something like this. I mean, there are some cases. I have to go through cases, but I, I mean, the cases are like this. Uh, this, this, and this, and this. Yeah. So, uh, can we find something already? No, we can't. So, I have to do this again. And if I do this, I'm, I'm fine with this. Uh, and I have to do this. Uh, now, uh, this, so I'm still free to, to do this one here. Well, let's do a one here. If I do a one here, then this is consistent, and this is consistent. Ah, uh, and I got a real problem because I got four zeros here. Uh, so and I have to go through all the cases. This is the standard. So, I'm trying to see why the you are at both the... Yes, because, because there are nine contexts. Yes. yes. And then let me ask, why do you have to get into the number? In, in, in integer. Yeah. Uh, because because it has to be between zero and one. So I it has to be a positive integer. No, either zero or one. It's either zero or one. If you add up, you want to do the three and four, yes. you have yes. to add one. True yeah. or false? Uh, yeah. Each point, each point. Ah, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a no, but, uh, but even, but even with no, the integer, but no. even with the integer, I can even make a minus one out of the zero. No problem. But, I mean, so, so, so basically, uh, oh, sorry, the two-value yeah. measure has to be zero and one. So this has to be yeah, some some number between zero and and eighteen. Yeah. 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 Uh, 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 one. But but anyway, uh, it has to be multiplied by two, and it makes it bad. This makes it not not the same as But you can prove also this by by going through the cases. But this is this is the parallel argument I understand. The other argument. 
so, so this is the conscious breaker theorem. Now, of course, the problem again is to really construct such a configuration, such a complex configuration, whose density interpretation, because this is all we do, we take those things from from uh, from from density, from quantum and force the complete to the classical interpretation of this space completely here. And this space is already here, for instance, that Rochel Specker described. Mm -hmm. So, okay. question to, to finish and find, uh, find out uh, what are we going to learn tomorrow as a, like a little just teaser, not explanations, just mentioning in yeah. one, two sentences. Yeah, uh, tomorrow, tomorrow? tomorrow, I think I, I was faster than I thought. So tomorrow I can do uh, the rural considerations I had about um, when, uh, when the end point of the diffs, the tits coincide. Because then you get something that was derived. This is more, in a certain sense, of course, yes, this is a cycle but, uh, but you, you get that you cannot have either true or wrong. So the, so the end point has to be very different. That's a very strong statement. And uh, with partial functions. And the second thing is, uh, I might explain to you a little bit of the generalized room model and automaton model. Because these are, uh, um, uh, are the, the, the classic interpretations of things which which have separately a set of two vector states. These are alternatives. This is, I, I, I was uh, at that time, you know, that, that don't exist structures, generic structures, which are non boolean and yet have a classical interpretation. And for instance, I was drawing Hasse diagrams with Skeeda's uh, mathematical program, and he discovered only from my examples because he didn't test it, he only tested it on boolean algebra. Yeah. That, the, that the module of the Hasse diagram was equal. So you have to, I say this, uh, uh, they, they, they have to have to it. Because there exists uh, such modes don't really exist uh, in the public mind. I also want to make a little advertisement for tomorrow, because uh, we have at uh, the end of the day, there will come uh, another guy called Philippe Grandier, who is uh, more, let's say, in the experimental side of uh, quantum logic and he is going to tell us the story of the experiments they did in uh, Orsay, in France, to test experimentally the existence of uh, entanglement, which is this uh, similar to that, that if you have zero, zero, then you have... Yeah, I, I, talk about the, I could talk about also the, the, the point of the method tomorrow, if time, because ah, this, yes. this directly connects how to find a systematic way to pull back in the corners. Yes. Yeah. So, that's it. Um, there are some folders waiting for you outside, because we could not get them for the morning, so they were ready on noon or something, so we brought folders. Now you can pick them up to put your documents in it. These are the conference folders that are available for you. So we meet tomorrow and uh, try to arrive a little earlier than 10, so we can start at 10 sharp and it doesn't go to too late tomorrow. So thank you for coming and see you tomorrow.